Welcome, everybody, to the Finding Hermes podcast. And you know the tagline. I hope you're ready to walk through the door with the God of the mind. Find your authentic self. Lay your cards on the table and become transparent to the transcendent. Usually I do this introduction. Well, I do this summary at the end of the interviews for Finding Hermes. But thought I'd jump in first for a couple of reasons. One of them is that we, uh, well, the tech archons attacked us. Uh, my guest, Richard Harris, an amazing guest, as you will see, was traveling to Cathar country. He was on his own quest for revelation and experience and research. And he was in a uh, hotel in southern France. Needless to say, the Wi-Fi wasn't very good. So there were a few glitches here and there. I was able to fix them. And I had the assistance of AI. I leaned on an AI platform that was able to splice things together, clean it up, get the audio better, and so forth. You may be wondering or asking yourself or asking me through the scream, uh, why are you using AI, Miguel? That's like Archon. That's Wetiko uh, installed, injected into your platform. Well, you may have a point, but as Jung said, as I keep saying as well, uh, we must understand the darkness and we must bring the darkness to the light. So if AI is something archonic, uh, let's find out. That's what I'm doing. I'm embracing several AI tools and let's see where it goes. And in a way, you will see too with this video. But uh, we certainly hope to have other interviews with Richard and expand because he is indeed a rising star in the Gnostic circles, big following across the pond. That brings me to my second point, is that it is great that the internet has, you might say, shrunk the world and we can all make connections, all of us with our similar ideas and heresies, if you would. But the truth is that it's still a big world out there. I get people reaching out to me every week saying, Hey, I never heard of your podcast, even though I've been doing it for a long time. Or, uh, Hey, this Gnostic thought is amazing. I need to learn more. Thank you. Or I'm grateful that I finally ran into you. So uh, the, uh, the good news is that uh, we still have a lot of connections to make. There is still a lot of good content and thinkers out there. And meeting Richard uh, was a good reminder of that. So keep reaching out because you will find uh, so much more in the vast, in this vast world and this internet that still has, uh, well, there's still a long way to go, a lot of reach and a lot to explore. Lastly, uh, when we end this interview, I thought I'd play a little audio from whom I consider one of my great spiritual leaders or inspirations, and that is Anthony DeMello. The universe is ironic because Anthony DeMello was a uh, Jesuit Catholic priest. However, he did go down, uh, he was also a, a psychotherapist, and he uh, at one point went down to learning about comparative religion, comparative mythology, and he discovered, you might say, perennial truths behind all these religions, a unifying mystic field that he found, and he expressed it in a lot of his lectures and his books. And he did get into some hot water with the Vatican, needless to say, but I am grateful that uh, his work has uh, continued and we can still find it. His book, Awareness, is uh, one of, still one of my favorite books, uh, a work I still lean on in times when I need inspiration or I'm a little bit stuck metaphysically. Uh, even Tim Ferriss, um, for those of you who know him, I think he did the four-hour work week or something like that. Uh, 
in his podcast, he admitted that he keeps a stack of uh, awareness by Anthony DeMello and he hands it out to people. If you meet somebody who's having issues, he'll just hand out uh, the book because it really is that useful. And uh, I hope you can get a copy yourself and really gain gain that, that gnosis. Because as you will see from this audio clip, unless YouTube decides to censor it because you never know, but if you're somewhere else on audio or Rockfin or whatever, um, you'll see that his ideas are extremely Gnostic. It's almost like if you go down that path, you're going to hit some Gnostic truths that just make sense. Well, that's it. I know you're going to enjoy this great interview with Richard Harris, and I know you'll enjoy our little bonus with Anthony DeMello. Enjoy and thank you. Welcome, everybody, to the Finding Hermes podcast. The, as many of you already should know, the part of AM Bignostic Radio that deals with more mental issues, spiritual issues, therapy from always an esoteric side. So I hope you're ready to uh, walk with Hermes, the god of doorways, the god of the liminal places, and the crossroads so you can find the solutions that work for you. Hermes is the god of the mind. He's the god of the tricks. So the mind is something we must always deal with as we navigate these Gnostic times. And with us, we have the honor of being joined by Richard Harris. Richard, how are you? Yeah, I like the introduction, man. I feel, and we were talking off camera about like some bits about Gnosticism and uh, Monsegur and all these things. So I, I know we're going to have a great chat today. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm very jealous. You, at the time of this recording, you are in France and heading down to Ka Cathar country. What is this just for fun, research, everything, or to lose yourself? Or why yeah, did you decide to go? Both. So, so, so look, man, I've got many things that I haven't worked out in my life, but one, one of them is my career and, and that, that I do have worked out. And like, actually, like all the stuff I do in my career is stuff that I would do for fun and I would do for personal development. So it's so it's all of the above. So what I'm doing is I started a pilgrimage in the West Country of the United Kingdom, which is a hotbed for psycho spiritual energy. So and I, I have a pet theory that that's one of the reasons why there were so many people woken to the uh, oh, we got a sense because we're on YouTube. Can, can I say uh, scam? Yeah, the thing that <laughs> happened in 2020, I suppose. A, a large ruse. <laughs> yeah. But like during this big ruse, um, like, you know, it was the British that were putting out the biggest numbers, like for those big protests early doors, you know, um, and 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 working with the sacred sites in the uk like i have an idea that it's 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 the psycho spiritual energy there so i was at places like glastonbury avebury even stonehenge stuff like that looped round into france and i went to um Am amiens which has got a good, good cathedral and I'm, f I'm following the energy nodes so i'm, I'm going it doesn't matter if it's a cathedral or a stone circle or what have you i'm going to where that the, there are big energy nodes where big major lines earth energy lines cross over go into these things and uh yeah and i'll end up down at montsegur probably in, in in a few days or a week or something that's awesome yeah there's a lot of portals down there so just like they are in uh, southern spain and other places so uh, that's it's a good idea to do that and uh as i tell people and um let me know if you agree People, it's a rage today. Oh, I want to do entheogens or this and that, psychedelics, and it's going to save us, or AI is going to save us, or whatever. I always say, look, these things are neutral. They are portals, psychedelics, technology, what you're doing. So they're neutral, and it's up to you. Or, as I always tell them, make sure you go with somebody, a good shaman, a good psychopomp, a good Hermes. Whether you're doing entheogens, theory, any of these things, have somebody that will guide you through the door. Because uh, left to our own devices, well, it's a mixed bag, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a mixed bag, and like I, I I don't know what your experience is, but I think I think certainly with the sacred sites and also with the psychedelics, there's there's guide rails, and actually it, it, there is a very positive leaning to it. I I, I don't think it's like a hundred percent neutral. I, I think those sacred medicines and definitely the sacred sites kind of want the best in you to grow, but for sure you can you can let all sorts of grotesque things grow, particularly with the psychedelics if you if if you abuse them. Uh, yeah. Or a bad shaman or somebody, you know, they can take you to some really bad places. Well, well yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, so, so, so any, um, any, I'm sure your audience is aware, like, when you do occult work, like you send a lot of energy through a lot of psycho spiritual energy through some very strange corridors and in, 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 in unusual corridors in the near planes. 
So if you got someone that's like a little bit malfeasant and they're like your shaman or like they're like working with you or something, they're fucking dangerous Be because like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard work enough as it is. It's just the hardest thing I've ever done. It's the great work. You know, I'm not saying that I've achieved or anything, but you know, at least attempting to do it is extremely difficult. And, and to have like that truly malfeasant energy in, 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 in dimensions that you've like barely made contact with. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I, I've run into that a couple of times and it's, it's, very very horrible you know oh yeah for sure and the old bad trip so why don't we talk a little bit about you and how you came to be a heretic tell us about your superhero <laughs> story clark kent to uh, what you are now oh god well thank you man i appreciate the compliment i guess i guess i mean like i've always been a little bit weird you know like like ever since i was a kid like i was i was like weird and, and like you know poor, poor poor emotional stability but like like a really good intellect and I think like it made me really badly adapted to school for a hundred different reasons. So I had this terrible distaste for, uh, for, you know, authority, which I later realized is like the archontic powers, you know, like the, the freaking empire, the matrix, the school system, the government, just, just, just the um, banal, stupid evil of these clowns. Like it's, you can hear it in my voice when I say it, right? Like I, 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 I feel like I'm born to to, to go to war with the, with with, the, with these uh, with these thoughts. So Gnosticism fell on fertile soil there when you when you don't like the empire or, or the system like that. And I think like I don't know if this is the same for you, but like being in my late teens, like coming into the work of like David Icke and like conspiracy theories like that, I, I now see that there's like a really big Gnostic a Gnostic energy to that. Do you do you see that too? Oh yeah, for sure. I think it's always been there. There's it's just been so suppressed. I mean, when people ask me, well, uh, did you like the movie The Matrix? And I say, oh, well, you should see the original Matrix. It's called Plato's Cave or the original Truman Show. Oh, the myth of Prometheus or the original Dark City. Oh, Araman and uh, Araman and Ahura Mazda, you know, it's always been there, but I think technology, science, all that has kind of accelerated the Gnostic viewpoint because, for example, the Gnostic 2,000 years ago were going, oh, well, we live in a, we live in a simulation, archons, and the church tried to paint them as insane, and other religions in the West <laughs> would not like adhere to this idea, but now science is telling us, oh, simulation Le video games tell us levels of reality the idea of uh people pulling the strings is more except ufos are more acceptable these starry warlords that are kind of playing so yeah gnosticism is kind of logical now even though it's oh, always true <laughs> man such good points and there's so much to unpack there so like to your early point one are you familiar with stefan heller Talk. Oh, of course. Yeah, I've been to service and uh, I'm actually going to call him next week. So, yeah, very familiar. No, oh, no. man, tell him Richard Harris says, thank you for your work. And I'm so fond of his stuff, like truly. Sure. The man the man is an angel, as you're well aware. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. But I, 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 I purchase his his uh, lectures and have them just, just churning through these. They're buttons. great. They are great, man. And like they don't get old. I've listened to hundreds of hours of that guy talk and it's still so fresh and so, so deep and rich. But he... He he keeps coming back to this idea. They say, like, look, the Gnosticism, you can, like, genocide everyone. You can burn it away. You can burn the books, whatever. But it, it, it doesn't live there. It's a spiritual current. And sooner or later, it's going to come through into the manifested again and, and rear itself. And, I and, and, and you know, I had this really good conversation with Freddie Silver the other day. Are you, are oh, you Freddie, with? yeah, yeah. I've, I've interviewed him. Great guy. I love his books. Remarkable guy. Loved his energy. So, 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 you know, we, we came to the conclusion. It was like, look, you know, this, this spring was like, had to go with the Cathars and had to go with the Templars and, you know, uh, with the, the Essenes and all that. But we tentatively, do you know, do you know what I think? I think this is the big moment. I think that the, uh, the Archontic powers are making the biggest push yet with their satanic one world order, you know, but, but this actually is the time when that Gnostic current turns into a, a gigantic volcano and blasts out you know and, and and we need it because if we if we don't have that wisdom it's it's clear to me through through my work and you know my own spiritual work but also working with clients and stuff that like if we're going to have the ufo tech if we're going to have the, just the insane reach uh, of the things that are almost becoming available to us now we must 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 have wisdom we must have it and and the wisdom comes from the rising sun of this gnostic current which which has been through us for many thousands of years and, and it's uh, i think it's this it's the big moment that's what i think 
Yeah, it's certainly pivotal as a, yeah, as we're talking, but also uh, as I tell people, when whatever you want to call it, the patriarchy, the solar powers, the demiurge was starting to grab humanity and take us into this new age of linear thinking and all that. The Gnostics were actually, and this is supported by academics, were the ones who were smuggling that ancient animist, shamanistic goddess vibe. Uh, as uh, Margaret ba Barker said, the fall of Sophia is actually a cipher for the fall of Ashira. When Ashira fell out of the consciousness of the Hebrew people, that culture changed and it affected the world with Christianity, Islam. So the Gnostics are also not only our hope to see reality for what it is, which is a you know right now a shithole, a horrible simulation, but also this wonderful magic of ancient times when we were connected to the land, to the goddess, and we, like you said, we believed in going inward and expanding our consciousness. So. Also, I'm sure you would agree that's also important. Oh, it's critical. I mean, like, like basically all of our problems stem from an inner retardation. And then and then you follow that retardation to the more surface part of the psyche where, where like Western psychologists can meet you, you know, when you look at poor thinking or poor emotional regulation or like negative automatic thoughts, like you might get in something like an anxiety disorder or like depression or uh, something like that. Like, like it, and then, then the chaos or, or just the ugly, and the boredom and the plasticness and, the, and certainly the meaninglessness in the manifested world they, they come from a causal chain of psycho spiritual events like then the deeper in the inner planes you go the more significant th those events are and to, uh, of, of the many and i know you've been on a big journey too so it's cool to swap notes right but 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 of all the many things i've tried like the, the psychedelics the, the, the Buddhism, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? Nothing gets quite so deep as as, as the Gnostic stuff. And actually, like, weirdly, it, it it's something which, you know, you, you always got to be careful having conversations like this because the last thing I ever want to be is, like, grandiose and pompous, you know? But, but like, nevertheless, it's it's a true statement that, like, as I was going on with these sacred sites and, like, and like much of these other spiritual practices, like, it's almost like I was excavating this this Gnostic truth that was like bubbling up. For, well, it was bubbling up from the deep and meeting me in, in, in the more you know surface level of the inner. So it seems like when I discovered it, I was like, right, this is it. This is the big one. This is the big enchilada. All the other stuff is great, highly validated. And the good stuff completely seamlessly fits into this. But this is the big framework. You know? No, I, I obviously I would agree and really well said. Yeah, as I was uh, I was having a, a discussion. I don't know if you know Gordon White, but uh, we were having okay. a discussion. Yeah, uh, great friend, uh, great uh, great researcher, chaos magician. But he's also very much into animism, and he was saying, "I'm trying to figure out how Gnosticism fits in the primordial religion." And I said, "Well, that's easy. That's the trickster archetype." And the trickster is the one that fuels the shaman, the magic of the tribe, uh, the medicine of the tribe with the, with the witch too. So that's where you find Gnosticism in sort of this primordial archetypal world where humanity started. So, and I think that's something we have lost and something we have to face. I mean, demons come home to roost and I tell people, and this has been supported also or echoed by Jungians who say this is the age of the trickster. You either deal with the trickster or you your mind will be destroyed and the trickster manif has manifested in whether you like it or not, whatever your position is, is manifested in Trump. The, the, the pandemic, the cryptocurrency, every, social media, there's this trickster vibe where nobody knows if they're coming, if they're going. But this is where the the prize is, the reward, the pearl is, because again, with Hermes, you can walk through this door to a new age, or you'll be left behind in insanity. That's and that's literally what's happening. Like I can see it. It's it's so viscerally clear to me that there there are two cultures like splitting off, like like uh, like nucleotides in a nucleus as it as it separates. And there's there's people that um, you can. It, what's interested me in to me is, is there's so many ways you can divide these two cultures. But on the surface, they look like the same type of human. But one of them is our culture is curious. So you got to be, you pull on that thread and then it leads to another thread and then you keep going and <laughs> you're dealing with Hermes and all this kind of stuff. It, it, it leads there, you know. The, the other side is, uh, is, is, in, is in denial. And, and, and like, you know, you, that, that's where you get all that anger from when, when, you, when you say, hey, do you realize that 
the thing in 2020 was a big ruse or that a well-known medical treatment is an experimental gene therapy or you know you get the, the the anger because because they're living in this contrived little world where like they've, they've built some little system in in the very surface part of their psyche to substitute for 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 a much greater more whole real thing and all the energy that can come from that and and so reality to these people becomes a threat because this it's like this horrible crooked little psycho spiritual life raft which is under attack when you say some words whereas like the the, the other side the gnostic which is a gnostic side you know is is so curious and it's like wow what do you know you know <laughs> like can i get some more of that truth can i get some more does, does that resonate yeah for sure for sure i mean Unfortunately, as I tell people, we're never going back to 2019. And when you think about it, 2019 was not a good time. Anyway, who wants to go back to this completely manufactured, materialist, shallow era, which I think is feeding, I'm sure you agree, feeding on the, the psycho psychological pain that people are experiencing in a collective. I mean, wouldn't you agree? I mean, I feel a lot of compassion because it pains me to see people in so much psychic pain, despair, depression, uh, doing drugs, uh, just going, it's, it's painful. And I'm sure you agree. I want to tell them there is a solution and that's to go inward. That's, you know, no, no. When you, when you say that something deep within me resonates and like, that's one, something that's come up through the meditation is like, it doesn't have to be like this. You know, like like when you look at just the ugliness, like and like like in England, for example, in a town that I grew up in, it wasn't a very nice town. And there's just streets and streets and streets of these like mental cell like houses, you know, and, and you walk oh, along yeah. them at night and it's like a desert because you go down this street, there's a bunch of houses, this street, there's a bunch of houses, this street, there's a bunch of houses. Then you get a little park and stuff like that, but it's it's just these boring houses, and there's the glare of the TV on at night. And, and, and I was just thinking, it doesn't have to be like this. It could be full of so many cool, exciting things, you know? And, and then it's like, well, what, what makes it exciting? And, and it's, it's the stuff we're talking about. And then we're not even, yeah. and that might seem trite when you compare it to like a, a savage drug addiction or like, like yesterday when I was on, on this sacred site, I saw this like beautiful little girl that was like disabled. And, like, and I was just like, well, that fucking sucks. <laughs> you know, like that doesn't have to be like that. We, we could totally fix that, you know? And, and, and again, perhaps you're the same, like with, I think we've gone through enough of this journey, me and you on the fringe on this Gnostic path, to know that the solution lies actually in the deep parts of the inner. And all that stuff is downstream from the Gnosis. Yeah, I don't think people understand how much potential every person has, but uh, it is a hard journey. You've already said this. I mean, when people ask me, well, what's the solution? I said, the solution has been the same throughout the years. It started in the temple of, Ide of Delphi. Know thyself. That's what the Gnostics kept saying, know thyself, know thyself. That's what every mystic says. Go inward and you will find God. You will find the solution. You will find an inner world. The problem, and maybe let me know your thoughts, Richard, is people want sort of a BuzzFeed Ten Commandments guru if you do this. And I always tell them, how can I tell you what works for you when you have to know yourself? Only you know what your solutions, what your spiritual practice is. I, I can say what works for me. I can say what's worked for other masters throughout history. But at the end of the day, it's your journey to finding yourself. That's so beautifully put. So there's, there's, there's a couple of things I want to say about that. Like what, what's clear to me is that like the truth, the gnosis is a transcendental object. Step down actually quite a few steps before it gets here. So you can no more find the truth down here, write it into 10, 100, a billion commandments. But then you, then you could draw a cube on a piece of paper. I mean, you can draw something like a cube, a symbol of a cube, you can point to the cube, but the cube ain't ever gonna be on that paper. You get the shadow of the cube. Mm -hmm. It's the same, it's the same with this thing. When, when like and, and morality, which takes you takes you there, like it, it itself is 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 a, is a is a concept deep within the inner, you know? So 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 you, you can get pretty close with some commandments, but you can't get there. And that's why our, our heroes, are, you know, you know this, but perhaps for some of the benefit of the audience, like people like Harry Potter or like uh, the Hobbits in, in Lord of the Rings, like they're always rule breakers. They they break, they know which are the right rules to break. They break them and it leads to the to the good, you know. So so there was that. There was something else I want to jog my memory. You were saying about uh, self knowledge, the inner journey. Find oh out yeah, yeah, it's your journey. No, that's it. So, so like as, as a coach, it, it, it soon becomes clear to me and I think anyone that does this and perhaps for, for your path too, that like 
you really can like use your charisma to like give people the answer. You you can, and and you can you can sort of like whitewash that. But the trouble is, the actual solution is destroyed in that process. Like mm -hmm. like I often tell my clients that I could write perhaps I could write you the best thing on the whole planet, and it is. We can all agree of all the eight billion, this is the actual answer. But if I'm destroying <laughs> that, that deep sacred thing inside you, you now go. Oh, I'm so smart and I'm so special and wonder and and. and um, beauty and goodness in you is pride. Okay, yeah, uh, so we lost the connection there. If that good thing in you is destroyed, then then you've sacrificed the greater for the lesser. You've sacrificed you know, kind of the idea, which leads you into this, this satanic clown world eventually. But Richard, here is something I wanted to ask you because we're talking about self-knowledge, the empire, the simulation, and you've addressed this. I've watched your interviews on Odyssey. And for the audience, if you don't think the Gnostic... Uh, vibe is working he has a hundred thousand subscribers which is pretty good for an all very good for any channel and, and certainly uh pretty amazing for an alternative kind of niche video platform but you talk you have spoken about the old philip k dick to fight the empires to become infected with his derangement so what do you tell people how do you fight the empire without becoming them? Well, that's a hard question. And like, I mean, I don't know the answer because because they're not beat yet, but I, I maybe <laughs> we can we can we can share some notes and throw some clues out. Just on, on, on a more sur surface psychological level, like when, when you when you meet a difficult individual who is, you know, possessed by the archontic powers, because when, you know, when they turn to evil, they, they, it, they have to, we can unpack that later if you want to. Sure. There's this, there's this like nastiness in them on, on in, 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 in the, the surface parts of the psyche. And it's almost like it's trying to voice itself on you. And, and and what you can do is you can meet that with its own energy and then say, no, you're the inferior one. Or no, you should feel guilt. Or, no, you're shameful. And it's so boring. Like it's really usually one of those, like, you know, you're the needy one, you know, there's probably only five <laughs> or something. But, but like, but like the point is that you're in when you, when, when that happens, you're in. And like the, 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 on, on, on that level, and, and perhaps the macro too, like what, what you got to do is you got to be something better. Like you, you got to aim to, 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 to love to the higher self, to, to that solar energy inside you. And, and that is that, I'm, I'm speaking too much in metaphor, but like, is, is that clear? Like what mm -hmm. I was saying with the way out? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You got to elevate yourself. It's easier to lower yourself, but it's hard yeah. to elevate yourself. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's what happens. Like you get in these back and forths, but but it but, but if you can get that higher self, that's that holy guardian angel, that self esteem loving energy, like the Christ, you know, the, the you know the thing that overshadowed the Master Jesus, like then you know you're on your way. Because because when you get close, right? And I wonder if you've experienced this. That, that one of them comes out of the woodwork to test you <laughs> and to drag you right back in. And they they when you get close and you and you and you really let that thing rip, like. They, they don't like it man they they get really like a junkie like like agitated you know you ever felt that no oh, of course of course i mean even in this interview like i said oh if we discuss the archons one of us is going to have internet problems i mean it's like uncanny that this happens uh, it's just the way it is but what about when your clients or people you are talking to in interviews who may not be aware of uh, gnosticism and you go the archons and they're like Hey, Bob, what are those damn archons? What do you, <laughs> how do you explain archons to people, to normies? Well, like the, the archons are right on the edge of what I know. Okay. So like, so like, you know, in, in the Gnostic portfolio that, you know, in my own journey, they're on the edge. Right. But I mean, like with, with, with any person or any coaching client or even myself, it, it starts with like, right. You want to have a better life. Do you? Yes, do. Okay. Let's look at where you are and let's find one thing to grow somewhere. And the cool thing about being a life coach is like, there's so many different topics. We can look at the, the economics. We can look at your social stuff. We can look at the psychological stuff. And you know, biohacking. There's there's so many different topics, and it's endlessly fun. But but like, you have to end up to the Gnostic paradigm sooner or later because if you because then what they're doing is they're pulling the threads. Then and if they're curious, and you know, the cool thing about having a coach is is you know you can spot the denial and say, well, that's a, that's a straw man argument there, or you're getting a little defensive. Like you know, like you can you can help me get through it quicker. They have to end up to this thing because if you just keep saying one true thing after another, it, it, it leaves them, you know? No, that makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, again, what do you tell people are the archons? Uh, or, And I know it's hard because if people tell me, are the archons extraterrestrials? Are they mind parasites? Are they spiritual beings? Are they uh, the thoughts in my head? I'd go, yes. 
Yes. That's hard for people to understand how they can be pretty encompassing because reality is encompassing. It's multi-layered. Yeah. So, okay. So, so most people don't ever ask me about that because the conversation, because that is a very deep thing and it, and it almost never goes that deep. But yeah, I mean, like they're, uh, maybe we can go back and forth here, but my understanding is they're like, like a rather deep level of demon, you know, they're kind of like an alpha demon. That's like yeah. that, that, you know, that, and, they, and they toy with things like a, a rather deep level of, of, of existence, something like that, not merely in the astral, but a layer or two deeper than that. But look, would you, has that been your experience? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they want complete control of our minds, our spirits. Uh, they feed off of us. Yeah, Agent Smith and the architect in the Matrix is a good example. So, uh, and they rule the stars and they rule fate. And uh, they basically help us create our false identities and uh, so much more. So they're a very you know, good Bond villain, if you know what I mean. They're like Thanos yeah, like the, Sauron. Yeah, like the best of all Bond villains, I guess. You know, I, I've spent some time with one or two like really, really good astrologers, like in Glastonbury. The energy mm -hmm. in Glastonbury is really strong. It accelerates consciousness, and you, you get one or two really good characters like that there. And I, do you know what, man? I hated the idea, like, because because when you get really good at that stuff, and it takes decades, I think they can say, "Oh yeah, in uh, three months you're going to get this," and then in in, in fourteen years this is going to happen, and and uh, and, they're, and they're bloody spot on. And do you know what? Like, I hated it. I like, I mean, it's it's fascinating, but I hated it, and I was like, oh, I I don't like that. I don't like that someone else has decided that these planets and that's all locked in and that kind of thing, like. I wanted, I wanted to free myself from it, you know? Yeah, free yourself from fate. That's uh, that's what we all wanted. That's what the Greeks were hated, the idea of fate and how it controlled us. Same with the Gnostics. It's, uh, yeah, a tale as old as, as time. It's perennial. It's, and of course, yeah, and God forbid, we don't want to get into the topic of free will because we could be here for like two hours. We're trying to free the mind, if you would. Uh, what in the last two years or since things happened in 2020 do you see humanity just losing it are you positive uh what's your take on uh, how things are going well i mean i, I like I, I think on on in the surface world in the exoteric world like it's just going from bad to worse and they're, they're breaking down and like a lot of the normies still don't get just how much trouble they're in like it's it's really building up and there's, there's going to come a point when the iceberg flips and they realize how much destruction has happened and they're going to go, oh, shit, you know, we're in trouble. But you, you know what, man? The counterculture, I could not be happier with the counterculture. It's, it's, yeah. And, you, you know, you're, you're an esteemed member of that. And, like, they're, they're amazing. They're loving. They're smart. They're capable in all these different things. They're aiming for the right stuff. Like, and all these strengths and virtues are building in us. And, and we're all goofy and weird in the right way. But also so capable as well. So on that side, so I'm so, but I think do you think we gotta go through a lot more mess before this process is done? I would say so. I mean, like you said, the archons are hitting us with everything and they're not being very imaginative. Like uh, yeah. so the other day I was reading, I, I think it was either The Guardian or one of your really terrible rags. Uh, just I love the British press because they'll just make stuff up and nobody asks a question. But but it was talking about how Biden, when he went to Ireland, that they had a had to stop an IRA plot to disrupt his visit. I was like, oh my God, they run out of ideas. Now they've got to go back in time and dust off the Irish terrorists and the IRA and bring them to the front to be the new villain. It's like, they keep trying these uh, unimaginative things like, you know, Soviets and Muslim terrorists and they, all these bad. It's like they need new writers, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's such a good point. So like, so these things exist on, on, a, on a level of the psyche that I barely know at all, right? So so you, you're going to venerate that. You're going to think, oh, my gosh, that's so serious, the kind of magic you can do. But when it comes through and you've been in this game a little while, you're like, hang on a minute. They're always so boring, you know, and so unimaginative. And like the, the contrast, I'm, I'm kind of new to it, but like it's it's really weird. It's like, wow, you've got all these like transcendental powers and this is the best you can come up with. It's like, <laughs> let's start a war. That'll get people on our side. Or, yeah, there's always some sort of, it's just bad writing. I think there's an old uh, Zoroastrian saying that goes, evil always turns stupid. It just, it runs out of fumes because it's, it's dead. It's soulless. It's mechanistic. It's uh, all it cares about is feeding on the resources and on our psyche. So it just turns stupid. It runs again. It needs new writers. Hollywood needs new writers. So we are in a very dreary time. So, but I'm happy that things are so 
better in England. Well, well, they, well they are, but I, I just want to build on your point because, like, I, I think what evil then has to do is either either collapses and then has this big turning around and turns to good at that point, or it, or it has to control coer- or like coerce or something or purchase the creativity of, of a good of good people because that's where all the energy is. So my my friend, he's, he's you know he's one of the most talented car designers in the uk like i love that man the way he, th- he thinks about art and stuff it's just you, you'd love him just he's inspiring right mm-hmm. but but like but like there's all these like kind of like archontic type people in his office that are just like preying on his work and doing office politics and that kind of thing and it's and it, it's just such a little microcosm of what what you're explaining here or what i think you're explaining because they can't do it so they need someone like my friend to like just cajole out of his genius and that's right. one of the rules that's one of the real sad things man it's like We've got all this great stuff, and, and it keeps going to like the worst possible people, which is one of the, the tremendous tragedies of our time. Yeah, and it is kind of a perennial story, but like we've been talking, uh, they've laid their cards on the table. It's transparent more than ever, so we live in this very shifting, illusion-falling society. I mean, it's, as, my, as uh, I guess James True said, this is the best apocalypse ever, because... Every the veils are being lifted if you want to look and and it's hard. I mean, again, I don't want people to fall or be suffering from anxiety and worry and pain and all that. Uh, but there's just a lot of it, a lot of it. What what advice? Since we want to give some practical advice, I loved your blog. You were talking about ways to help people with anxiety. What are some ways you help uh, your clients with anxiety that you might want to share with the audience? Yeah. So, so like, I think when, when you talk about stuff like Gnosticism and stuff, that hundred percent, that's the, the bleeding edge of the bleeding edge. And you know, you want to go there. Right. But like people, people often don't like spiritual people don't, don't give enough time to like the basics, man. Like the best spiritual work I've done is usually when I work really well on my body. I'm training a, with a mixture of strength, cardio, and mobility. My supplements are good. My nutrition is excellent. I recommend the ketogenic diet and then the cyclic ketogenic diet. Fasting oh. is good. Other cleanses are good, like Cambo cleansers, liver cleanse, kidney cleanse, uh, coffee enemas, if you, you want to do that, like uh, parasite cleanse. So, so sort your sleep out. Like, you know, you find the, the 10 or 15 like best practices for good sleep. I can send you a handout if you want. Like, just message me and me or my assistant can send it to you for free. And it will just say, like, if you're having trouble with sleep, do these 15 things and it works most of the time, you know? So I would say definitely start with that and, and also validate that as, like, really legit spiritual practice. Once you've got the basics done, like, I think just the squats and deadlifts of a really good spiritual practice is Vipassana, Vipassana meditation. And I wonder, like, if, if have you done that kind of meditation for your thing? Squats? No, not exactly. Uh, no, there's a lot of forms. It's of a metaphor. Like just like like if you go to the gym, if you just do like squats, deadlifts, and like uh, bench press, they're like big compound movements that will really do the bodybuilding. So it's kind of that's, that's oh, okay. the metaphor. Okay. Yeah. No, I agree. I think so. Everybody should have some form of baseline foundational meditation. Whatever works for you. There's many meditations out there, and one will really help. Why do you think? Why of that one do you do you think it works so much? Well, I'm saying uh, there's some that work for me. Meditation, like obviously there's Zen, TM, self hypnotism, uh, walking meditation, guided med. There's so many, and I have found what's worked for me, and other people may find. And again, what is meditation? I would say, yeah, a it calms the mind, and b it's a great resource for self knowledge. You go in. And you start listening to your unconscious. You start listening to your body. Never had a better time where I can listen to my body, where my body will actually say, hey, I need more of this, or you need more, you know? So that's why I I would suggest meditation, for sure. A million percent. Also, like, you know, if we're talking about, like, going through the Great Awakening and that kind of thing, like, I think getting, like, the the, the manifested world is one of the places where this takes place. So, like, getting off their system. So we're doing this on StreamYard right now. Like, it's not Zoom. So I, I like that, you know, like I'm on a Linux laptop. So that gets rid of the Google and, 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 and the, the windows and everything, you know, like try just if, if you see one of these evil cabal organizations, like, you know, you try to ladder out of it and you, and you can't do it all in one go. Like, like I'm infested with so many of those people right now, but, but what all of us can do is step out of it one more step each time. Like my friend Lloyd, for example, I'm very fond of him. He, he got, um, he's got like a, a card. It's a MasterCard, I think, that he pays for food and everything. And it's loaded with Bitcoin. So like, you know, when we 
go to restaurants and stuff he pay he pays with that card and it trades the bitcoin for the pounds at the current exchange rate and so all right it's still using their system but you know what that's that's two-thirds not their system now you know and it's it's getting closer you see no i'm with you 100 percent uh yeah you got us we we're talking about the empire starve it little by little every time you grow your own food or you stitch your own clothing instead of buying something little by little change your diet watch less tv you said uh get rid of one social media channel little by little you starve the empire absolutely and i, t I tell you like what, what you realize is like we don't need them they need with a capital n us we don't need them and then when and so you so you know you, you how do you deal with narcissistic abusers you put boundaries in place and you walk away they don't have that move we do exactly yeah well said well said and uh, people don't expect some sort of, uh, they always say, well, what's a libertarian or anarchist utopia going to look like? And I'm like, there is no utopia. People, <laughs> you're always going to have assholes, thieves, good people, you know, it's just the way it is. But at this rate, uh, we are looking at the extinction of Western society if we don't change. No, we will. And and like, I, I think with, with the nukes and stuff and with like the scale of physics and, all, and, and the rest of it, like that, that's coming. But but what what we who 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 keep moving forward with the Gnostic side of things are getting is this spiritual paradigm where we go within, we build the architecture of the inner planes, we we, we begin to to link the, the manifested world with the inner and start to notice. Okay, well if I move this here, then this moves here, and then it goes back this way. These are the rules. These are the principles. And then when you have that more full way of being, like like you have the wisdom. And then, you know, don't dial the scale of physics box up to 11 to blow off that mountain. Don't, don't, don't make a shit communist tower block and all the rest of it. So, so, we, so we have to go through it because, like, we'd kill ourselves with this stuff if we didn't. Yeah, very true. Very true. And uh, you also, uh, in your coaching business, you use a lot. Of, again, as you say in your web, website, you use a lot of techniques. You uh, make sure that you tailor made these for your clients. Uh, how does Jung play in your your life or your uh, therapy? Well, I, like he's he's a great Gnostic prophet, isn't he? The master. Yeah, yeah, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he and he, you know, he's got a lot of truth and that kind of thing. And I, I find his maps of of of, of the inner like really useful. Uh, and and, it, and the good thing about Jung actually is like he, he he he, you could be like a real materialist reductionist person and start to like go into Jung head up that way, don't you find? Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, he he always said, I'm an empiricist. I am uh, recording what I see, and there is phenomena within us. There is phenomena, and it's completely scientific. Take it for what you will. So he obviously believed in a spiritual world, but in his job, he was trying to be scientific. Yeah, so so, so that helps people get out the madness of of that like prefabricated materialist world, and 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 but it it doesn't it doesn't trigger the defenses so much because it's it's all sciencey, academicy sounding stuff. But it but you but you're opening um, people up to some really profound ideas if they just keep pulling the threads and keep being honest with him. So but but also like he you know for my own work, I mean man, like you could just read Jung's books for for like 10 years, read them slowly, you know, like and, and read the other material first so you can understand what he's saying. But you could loop around them over 10 years and man, you'd get some serious wisdom if you just if you just did that one exercise. Yes, I agree. I agree. And uh, it's nice to know um or how should I put it? When you have clients, are they surprised that they have an unconscious, that they have souls? Or is that because we live in such a time where people think that my identity is everything there is, which is, of course, completely false. Yeah, it, it is false and it's limited and it's, it, it, it leads to, to, to a satanic clown world. But that's, that's one of my favorite jobs in coaching. It's like, I've got to be careful with it, right? But like just blowing people's minds, man. I'm like playing this like Morpheus character where it's like, <laughs> I'm going to show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Just and just and just delivering on that. And like, and it's like, I could keep going, I could keep going. And maybe it's a little, a little, I don't know, like a little pompous maybe or a little ego driven. But I, I love it so much just to, to, to show people that there's this like, much deeper world especially especially when they're young as well because young people man they got so much energy and so much curiosity and like when you blow their mind with this stuff like you know it's oh, so cool i want more and it's it's unbelievably sat it's one of the most satisfying parts of my job when, when i'm able to help someone do that that's awesome that's awesome and uh what do you what is how has your coaching been or um, in terms of 
are people suffering more or what do you what is the mo what is the biggest mental issue you think is happening or emotional issue in the last year with people you work with or talk to yeah yeah so so like top five material would be like uh, narcissistic abuse big time so a lot of people really? haven't been yeah like but also people that are like a little way on on the side of evil but not so far gone that they can't be helped and, and then trying to ladder out of that, trying to love more, trying to stop judging everyone all the time, that kind of thing. So that's a major part. Substance abuse, like a lot of people are addicted to things like alcohol, like cannabis. I mean, it's a sacred medicine, but it, it does right. come up as an addictive thing. Porn and masturbation, that is killing people out right. there. Yeah, partic particularly us men like that. I have spent so many hours going over that with, with people. And it's been a big part of my journey as well. Harnessing that, that energy that you get, which just starts to build you out you, you know but 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 what about you i mean like like you know you've been on this train for a while like what, what have you found that, that works well i mean uh that works again uh, i'm always going to tell people know thyself i would make the worst guru richard because i'm like i tell people exactly what they don't i don't have a formula but i would say yeah know thyself for me i mean addiction obviously i went through rehab years ago i've done the 12 steps uh but mostly yet yeah, Jungian therapy has helped the most i would say to yeah to help with addiction because i can go within myself and i can see for example if i'm craving some like let's say you're craving porn it's not because you want to get laid or it's there's a, a million things that are happening with you why you're doing this you're projecting your shadows coming out your there's some childhood trauma that you're missing there's 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 all these forces that are coming within you and if you can just see them and grab them it really helps bring down the addictive to self-destructive issues so that's what's helped me so yeah and, and like 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 if, so if someone's listening to this and they're like right i want to be a gnostic like like how, how do you think someone someone could go about that uh well there's i think we both like stefan heller and he had a famous line he said in an interview with some LA newspaper, and he said, uh, every serious artist is already half a Gnostic. So you need to create. It's the old, you know, the gospel of Thomas. If you bring out what is within you, it will save you. If you do not bring out what is within you, it will destroy you. So you have a purpose. You need to bring that shit out. And it could be anything. It could be life coaching, art model training helping poor people in the kitchen you have a purpose you have a talent you have a light and you need to bring it out so such a good point i had a, a really good chat with uh, like a guy called matt presti i don't know if you know him no he, he's, he's one of us right like like and he, he he that was his main emphasis he's like look man create art create it let it chat follow through you and, and i see that now because if you as long as it's not some contrived stuff that's like modern art or something that's there just to sort of look good and like, Ooh, I'm special and I'm clever, you know, like that, that yeah, don't do yeah. shit. I won't do anything. But like, if, if, if you're really sending something through you and like, it has to be authentic because you're, you, you know, you don't choose your passion, you know, you're a, so something close to what we've been trying to talk about and this thing ch chooses you and your yeah. egoic conscious may, may then decide to go into that slipstream or, or do something contrived or something. That's you know what, what Jung want? said. It said, we don't have ideas. Ideas have us. We need to get yeah. it. We are being the gods are using us. So, and like you said, God, what's what's the first thing God did when He became conscious? We want to be in His image. We need to create good things. That's our yeah. purpose as humans. So, and again, like, don't you notice that when you do that, like, when you're like, like, there's always some some like kind of crooked bureaucrat type person that creeps out that wants to try and shut it down. You ever notice right, that? Right. Of course, of course. Yeah, the world does not want individuality, originality. It wants this Borg-like, and it's safe. I mean, these powers think that this will move the species forward. If we're all ants building the hive that looks the same, then we'll survive. But I don't think that's the way it is. I mean, again, you need the shaman. You need the witch. You need the, you know, to, for society to be mentally healthy so and, and that's it like i want to i want to stress to the audience like look this so most of this stuff i haven't worked out right like because it's it's hard subject matter but I've, I've worked a step or two of it out and i tell you man like from the bottom you can hear it in my voice like you go on this path it's bloody hard <laughs> things tend to break down and it's, it's unbelievably challenging but like i have never wanted for magic for mystery for meaning 
for purpose, all that kind of stuff. Like the, the, the very thing that this dead world needs so much because it's like a desert for that stuff, right? I've got more of that than I could possibly handle, even on the worst possible day where everything's not working. And, and that is one of the things that this path gives you. It gives you 11 out of an infinity of that stuff. Oh, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And then I tell people, get used to uh, believing everything you've been told is a lie. Just start with that. Your parents lied to you. Your church lied to you. Your teachers lied to you. They meant well. The gods lied to you. The governments lied to you. The whole system is exists to keep you asleep. And uh, your own brain exists to keep you asleep. It wants you to have sex, eat, shop. It wants you to do everything except find the truth, which is that, but you're a God, you're divine. You are eternal. Beautifully put. Okay. So here's, here's a question for you then. Like, so what do you, what would be your favorite archontic lie? My favorite archontic lie. Or like top, something that would appear in the top five. Cause there's so Oh, that would say that, uh, there is such a thing as Miguel, which is not. There is no, uh, because I mean, you know, right. We have the ego, the complexes, the shadow. We have our, the, we have the, the sins or the information of our ancestors. We've got the programming of our culture, the personas, right? The Richard who goes on a date with a girl is not the same Richard who hangs out with his mother. There are two different beings of exi modes of existence and consciousness. So that would be it. Once you realize that I am legion, then it's awesome. And this is not, I mean, the ancients knew this. They knew this very well with the, the Egyptians with the seven souls and the Gnostics with the levels of reality and the Kabbalists with many divine sparks. They knew this. They knew human. There was no authentic Richard or Miguel. We were just uh, part of a story, a funny story. <laughs> good answer, man. That's a good answer. Yeah, but it's hard because I want there to be a Miguel. Damn it. I want to be one Miguel who can get as much money and attention and material <sighs> stuff as possible. I want that so badly. And reality is exactly how Miguel thinks it is. And if I work and pay my taxes, everything will be fine. Come on, man. You don't <laughs> want that. You've seen Nothing wrong with that. Part of us that deals with reality and wants to, you know, wants a safe a safe space well, it, like it, okay it leans that way but like but maybe but maybe that's like a like not the ego being the ego it's the retardation of, of the ego and the, the ego not like, listening to the soul yes you're right yeah and, and i like because i because like this is one of the things that I, I i i tend to push back on people with people when i get into these topics right i think me me personally and like maybe you might disagree like i think there's too much ego bashing going on especially with oh, the eastern agree. tradition like you ever see those like um i'm gonna butcher the guy's name like jacob bohem like he's a mystic yeah jacob Bame, i think yeah, jacob Bame, yeah 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 like like he i don't know if you want to put one one or two of these pictures on the edits like i can send it to you if you want but like sure, sure. he drew these beautiful pictures of these visions where he got out of ego go at consciousness and got into the higher self right but but the ego looks up to it and i and, and i kind of feel like the ego is fine. Develop it. Develop those four functions of the ego, like the the intellect, the sensory function, the intuition, the the feeling. Get get them all great and strong, and then look the ego up to to to, to the right place, like the higher self. Like so, that's not getting rid of the ego. That's validating it, honoring it. Like it's an important part of who you are. Just use it right, right in with anything else. And I think my ego is very happy with that message. You know? No, no, a hundred percent. We need a strong ego, like you said. That is listening to the outside world, that is listening to within us. Uh, yeah, a good ego, and you're right. Uh, I think it's nefarious that some of these religions and movements want to destroy the ego, because without the ego, we're easily manipulated. A weak ego can be controlled. Even Krishnamurti used to uh, criticize people in the East. as like, you guys sit there and meditate all day, day, you are as limp as asparagus. And the Gnostics would say, you need that charged eros, that ecstasy, that power, you also need that to survive in this world, not just oh, baby woo woo. <laughs> You're damn straight, and like like that, like I maybe they're better spiritual people. Fine, I don't care. Like the the the, the image I I have of what I wish to aspire to and what I'd like to see in the world, 
are strong people embodied in their masculine and feminine energy who, who can turn their hand to business if they if they want to have like you know can can paint art can like have good conversations can make love well can, who are well traveled and, and all that kind of stuff and can also like astrally project and like you know have conversations with like aeonic beings and that kind of thing <laughs> like, like like that that gets me going you know not just like like what, what i think is associated more with the eastern practices where, where you deny all that stuff like yeah if you want to do that fine but like that just doesn't get my my juices flowing that, that version of spirituality at all yeah well christianity too and other religions tell you to deny things too that's a problem so do you think that was a bit of an archontic project the way that that got like degenerated yeah i would say so i mean cutting off cutting us off from access to the upper realms or our inner self and saying we're in charge of it we are the keepers of the gates it's not not a good thing i would say so some people some people it's want that good. yeah we have to accept richard most people just want to be ruled i was like yeah i mean that's all cool but like the, the denotations of what what you're saying are true right but the connotations you're missing if you can really like understand what the unconscious is even a little sliver of it and how that connects with the manifested world and link them together like it is nothing like like how you're saying and it. it's it's <laughs> it's very cool you know? Yeah, it's a vast, endless ocean, and it reaches the collective unconscious where we suddenly are talking to our ancestors and the primeval forces and the archetypes. It's, it's incredible. I mean, I think, uh, like the Hermeticist said, as above, so below, as within, so without. Uh, the universe, I am in the universe, the universe is within me. So that's why I keep saying the potential of every individual is just amazing. And they're selling themselves out by posting on TikTok and arguing on the internet and all that stuff. Yeah. So, that, so there's, so there's this retardation that takes place there. And then there's this disappointment. It's like, man, do you know what you left on the table, what you could have been, you know? Exactly. So uh, yeah, I keep stressing to people, just look inward. And again, said there is no savior. You are your savior. No, nobody's coming to save you. It's up to you. You, you have the Christ within. I we, we do. And I, I have an intuition that, like, in the spirit of the age of Aquarius, because this this big launch up also happens between the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. That when the Christ comes in this time, it won't be like with one absolute mega master like Jesus. It will be many, many people all around the world that have the Christ overshadow them. I don't know what the number is, but many. And, and, and that will be the way that the sun rises again for, the, for this new age. Cool, cool. Well, yeah, let's keep the positive vibes because there is a lot of opportunity. So, so awesome. Well, as we get to the end, uh, why don't, and I'll have it, of course, on the show notes for those listening in audio and show notes on the video versions. Tell people where they can find out more about you. Well, um, you can find me on Odyssey. Like if you type in Richard Harris or Richard Harris Coaching, you can find me there. I do a live stream um, every Tuesday, like unless the internet breaks down or something, which it has done the last couple of weeks. A Tuesday, 8 p.m. UK time. And we talk about this kind of stuff, personal development, various uh, scams from the cabal. And we have a lot, we try to have a lot, we do have a lot of fun and it's like there's a lot of love there and a lot of a lot of positivity it's really cool and if you want to hire me as your life coach you can my, my website is richardharriscoaching.com and um, you know that's where you can contact me if you want me to do life coaching awesome awesome yes and uh again we'll have it on the show notes but this has really been a fun discussion i hope you find some treasure down there in cathar country and you can come back on the show and share it with us it would be awesome but yeah it's been a great conversation and i really appreciate you uh coming on finding hermes richard man thank you i had so much fun and i will find treasure down down on this pilgrimage and i and i would love to share it with you and, and have another chat like this in the, in the in the future let's do it let's do it uh yeah let's have some more fun and keep going through those doorways with the god of the mind uh, now listen very carefully the next few minutes this sounds a bit pompous but it's true the next few minutes could be the most important minutes in the lives of some of you. If you could grasp this, you hit upon the secret for awakening. You would be happy forever. You would never be unhappy again. Nothing 
but nothing would have the power to hurt you and i mean that nothing it's like you know you take black paint and throw it up in the air and keep throwing black paint in the air the air is uncontaminated you don't color the air black and no matter what happens to you you remain uncontaminated you remain at peace there are human beings and you know it who have attained to this that is what i call human not what people are generally living that's what i call being a human being that's what i call natural not this nonsense of being a pup a puppet jerked about this way and that having any event or any person tell you how to feel and then you proceed to feel it they call it being vulnerable ha ah, i call it being a puppet want to be a puppet you press a button and you're down you like that so there it is if you do not identify with any of those labels first of all most of your worries cease what are you generally worried about later we'll talk about your fear of disease and death but ordinarily you're worried about what's going to happen to your career a businessman small time businessman kind of 55 years old he's sipping beer somewhere at a bar and he thinks well look at my classmates they've really made it the idiots they've made it what do you mean they've made it they got their names in the newspapers you call that made it huh they got their names in the news in the prison journal huh which all the prisoners are reading and he thinks they've made it <laughs> successful president of a corporation the other guy has become the chief justice and somebody else has become this and the other person has become that monkeys all of them who determines what it means to be a success the main preoccupation of society is to keep society sick and the sooner you realize that the better every one of them most of them they're loony they're crazy you became the president of the lunatic asylum and you're proud of it it means nothing it really means nothing being the president of a corporation has absolutely nothing to do with being awake or being happy or being a success in life nothing absolutely nothing having a lot of money has nothing to do with being a success in life you're a success in life when you wake up when you don't have to apologize to anyone when you don't have to explain anything to anyone you don't feel the need to explain anything to anyone you don't give a damn what anybody thinks of you or what anybody says about you you have no worry you're happy now that's what i call being a success i don't know about you so this poor guy is thinking sadly that he isn't a success like his classmate nobody has ever told him that having a good job and being famous and having a great reputation has absolutely nothing to do with happiness or success nothing it's totally irrelevant and so he's worried about what his children will think about him what will his the neighbors think about him what will his wife think he should have become famous that's what your society and your culture is drilling into your head day and night and so is mine people who made it made what made asses of themselves because they drained all their energy in getting something that was worthless and they're frightened and they're confused and they're puppets like the rest look at them strutting across the stage the cops said they'd get if they had a stain on their shirt you call that a success look how frightened they are at the prospect that they may not be reelected call that a success so controlled 
so manipulated. These are not happy people. These are miserable people. They don't enjoy life. They're constantly tense and anxious. You call that human? And do you know why that happened? There's only one reason. They identified with some label. They identified the I. That was their error. With their money, with their job, with their profession. Tell about the lawyer who says to a plumber, when he's looking at the plumber's bill, he says, hey, you're charging nearly $200 an hour. Even I don't make that kind of money as a lawyer. And the plumber said, even I didn't make that kind of a money when I was a lawyer. He said, right, so. So, uh, you could be a plumber or a lawyer or a businessman or a priest that does not affect essential I. That doesn't affect you. I change my profession tomorrow. That's like changing my clothes. I is untouched. Are you your clothes? Are you your name? Are you your profession? Stop identifying with that. Because that will come and go. You know what happens when you really understand this? No criticism can affect you. No flattery or praise can affect you either. When someone says you're a great guy, what's he talking about? He's talking about me. He's not talking about I. I is neither great nor small. I is neither successful nor a failure. It is none of these labels. These things come and go. These things depend on the criteria that your society establishes. These things depend on your conditioning. These things depend on the mood of the person who happens to be talking to you right now. They have nothing to do with I. I is none of these labels. Me is generally selfish, foolish, childish, and a great big ass. So when you say, you're an ass, so you're telling me, ha ha, I've known it for years. That guy there, the conditioned self, the conditioned self, what did you expect? I've known it for years. Why did you identify with him? Silly. That isn't I, that's me. Now, here are those important minutes I was telling you about. You want to be happy uninterruptedly. Happiness is unpaused. Try to understand that. Happiness, true happiness, is unpaused. You cannot make me happy. You are not my happiness. You say to the awakened person, why are you happy? And the awakened person replies, why not? Happiness is our natural state. Happiness is the natural state of little children to whom the kingdom belongs until they have been polluted and contaminated by the stupidities of our societies and our cultures. To acquire happiness, you don't have to do anything because happiness cannot be acquired. Does anybody know why? Because you have it already. How can you acquire what you already have? <coughs> then why don't you experience it? because you've got to drop something. You've got to drop an illusion. 
You don't have to add anything on to be happy. You got to drop something. Life is easy. Life is delightful. It's only rough on your illusion. You got illusion. You got ambition. You got greed. You got craving. You know where they come from? From your having identified with all kinds of labels here. Now, when you go through life with plenty of preferences, but you don't let your happiness depend on any one of them, then you're awake. You're moving towards wakefulness, and then. Dropping your illusions, happiness—call it what you wish—is the state of non-illusion, where you see things not as you are, but as they are. In as much as this is possible to the human being, to drop illusions, illusions, to see things, to see reality. Someone said. Life is something that happens to us while we're busy making other plans. That's pathetic. Live in the present moment. Now, this is one of the things that you will notice will happen to you as you're coming awake. You are living in the present. You are tasting every moment as you live it. You're hearing the symphony, one note after the other.